hello, hello. Welcome to another Friday afternoon live. Uh, if you're re-watching this later on, let me know in the comments. As always, if you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I'm always happy to help. Um, I'm actually gonna dive right in this afternoon. I've got quite a lot to get done. So Friday afternoons are my only day to sort of really get stuff done when the studio's closed. So busy, busy today. So let's transform this beautiful old urn. Um, my name is Elise and I'm the owner and the artist behind the Painter Brush & Co. We are located at 37 High Street, Eagle Hawk in Bendigo, Victoria. And you can also find us online at thepainterbrush.com.au. I keep forgetting to say that little spiel, so I've said it this week, so I'm covered for a few weeks, eh? All right, so this beautiful urn, it is huge, it is heavy, it is very solid, um, and it's gorgeous. I absolutely love it. Um, I found it, a, I wanna say a few weeks, but it's probably been a couple of months, actually. Um, I found it a couple of months ago on Facebook Marketplace and had to have it, immediately had to have it. It was a really good price and pieces of this, like I knew it was big, I didn't realize it was this big, but urns this size are normally really, really expensive. I've wanted one for a long time. Um, I don't know if it's gonna be for sale. We'll see what it looks like at the end of it. But just because I think I'd really, really like it. So it's big, it's got some really nice little details. It's got this beautiful neck rim there. There you go, now you can see it. Um, really beautiful, subtle details. Um, I think it's been uh, painted at some point. I'm not 100% certain that the finish that's on it is the original finish. Um, it does feel like it's been painted at some point. So. All I've done is given it a really quick clean and um, quick clean hot soapy water so that today we can paint. So I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with it. I knew I wanted to keep it black and I didn't want to, I knew I didn't want it white, but the black's a little bit boring. It's sort of just, it's because of, because blah, 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 my words are not working because of its size I, i'm just feeling like it's a lot of black and it needs to be broken up a little bit and then last night or the earlier today actually no it was earlier today um i was scrolling through instagram as you do and blue wren interiors who are in queensland posted this absolutely beautiful hutch and on the hutch as part of her decor she has, oh, this really beautiful urn that's very, it looks like it's stone. I don't know if she's painted it or if it's a piece that she's purchased. Her styling is always stunning. But I really look like how aged it is, that there's a bit of white happening, but it's not so much that it's just white or it's just black. It's got that really, really nice aged finish. And her staging, can I just say, let me just show you this whole hutch. I love her staging. I always go to her posts when I'm looking for some inspiration. Let me just, I'm not logged into Facebook, so it's gonna cover up the bottom of it. This hutch though, check that out. How beautiful is that? So she's just used up here in the center. Obviously the piece that I'm doing is way too big for that, but I think it's also a really good staging piece. So. We're going to attempt a sort of stone finish. We're gonna put some Purico carbon on there. And then I have pulled out my texture finish. It's got a little bit of texture. Um, I know you, even if I bring the camera close, you're not going to be able to see it. It's sort of got like a bit of a crisscross motion when they put the paint on there. It's a little bit, but we'll see how well our brush picks it up. If it's really not picking it up enough, then we will add some texture with Pure Eco's texture finish as well. But we'll play around and we'll see. So I've got carbon. Obviously we're already working on a black base. I've only got the carbon really, if I'm feeling like we're getting a bit too much white, but sometimes it's also nice to bring our black back in and just sort of layer it, okay? So we've got our carbon and then I've got 
an assortment of Pure Eco Greys. Now, I don't want to go bright white, but we'll see what it's looking like. I can always grab a brighter white like porcelain or snow, even cotton or seashell I think might work as well, but we'll see what the greys are doing. So I've got, um, I'm looking at the label, it's not written in full and I can't remember what it's called. Macadamia, <laughs> it says Mac on it. I'm like, what's Mac? Macadamia, really soft white. I did this on that marble top cabinet a few weeks ago. Uh, we've got fossil, which actually comes out really, um, which can look really grey rather than brown. Hello, hi Ashley. Thank you, I am, I hope you are too. We've got mist, which is a really light grey. Mist can look really bright, so I'm hoping without bringing in an actual white that this might be our answer. We've got some uh, chino, which is... It's like a, um, this jar doesn't show it very well. Let me grab my little pot. And it's, it's like a brown. It's, it's really warm. And I think that's going to be the first colour that we're going to use today. And then I really wanted some peppercorn. But I don't have a little jar. I don't want to open a big jar just for this. Um, and I can't see myself using it in the next little while. In saying that, I've only got like one piece left at home that I can currently work on. So, who knows? I'm going shopping in a few weeks, so <laughs> I might need to use it. Um, but instead of peppercorn, I'm using Engine, which is a darker gray. It's a little bit lighter than peppercorn. I really want like a charcoal gray, but we don't. Lead's getting too dark. Lead is pretty much carbon. Well, it looks really blue in this jar. Lead is pretty much carbon, it's only a little bit lighter, a few shades. Here we go, let me grab my little sample. I've had this discussion so many times today. It's been the day for blacks and um, neutrals today. We either have like a really bright day here in the shop where everyone wants colour, or everyone's trying to decide between neutrals. <laughs> so this is lead and carbon in the silk. So you can see the difference is pretty minimal. If you're putting a piece painted completely in carbon and then a piece with lead on it next to each other, you're going to notice that difference. It's very subtle, but you will notice. But for those who were curious, little difference. All right, so I've got an assortment of brushes here. I've got my 38 mil. These are the brushes that I use all the time. These are what I recommend to use with all the paints. I absolutely love them, they're a synthetic bristle. I've got an old Stalmeister, Stalmeister, I don't know how to say it. That's a round brush, it is, the bristles like don't move. It's seen better days. So this is generally my stencil brush or if I'm looking to add some texture by stippling, um, just because the bristles don't move. And then I've got another 38 mil brush as well. This one's all right, but it's coarser than these. So I can get a little bit more texture as well. I'm not looking for a lot of texture, but I'm looking for a little bit. So we're just sort of gonna have a bit of a play. And we're gonna start with Chino. I wanna start with a darker color. And then, helps if I've opened the jar, doesn't it? Um, I'm gonna start with a darker color and work our way up to the lighter colors. If you've got questions, let me know. Even if it's not specifically about what we're doing, I'm always happy to answer them. Lives are a great way if you can't come into the store. Um, otherwise, you're more than welcome to give me a phone call as well. Um, or send me an email, message, whatever you like. So here's Chino. Now, this is in silk finish. Not ideal for what we're doing. Ideally, I want it in chalk, but I don't have it in chalk. So we're gonna use it in silk. Now, silk finish separates a lot. So it's really important that you mix it really well. If you try and paint with that separated bit at the top, you're not gonna get any coverage. So always make sure that you stir your silk finish really, really well. You want all those components incorporated. Most of the time it separates just because the pigments and the other ingredients are heavier. 
just needs a quick little stir. Make sure you're scraping up from the bottom of the jar and getting it really well incorporated before you work with silk finish. Chalk finish is pretty good. I always recommend a stir or a shake. I find that chalk finish doesn't separate quite as much, but some colors certainly do. So it doesn't hurt to give it a quick stir, quick shake. Um, I use paddle pop sticks or an old knife or a spoon, whatever's going really. Um, and I just don't use your brush because you'll get too much paint on your bristles. All right, so nice and mixed. We're going to, I think we're gonna dry brush first. I just wanna see how much of this texture we can pick up on without adding more texture. If we're finding that we're just not picking up on texture, then we'll come in with our, um, then we'll come in with some texture finish. But let's see how we go first. I think we'll be fine. So piece of cardboard, bit of paper, whatever you've got going on. Dry brush, so my brush is dry. There's no water on it. It is a clean, dry brush. Dry brushing, you don't wanna have any moisture on your brush, ideally, um, if you can help it. A little, oh, little bit of paint on your brush, not too much. And the keys here, not to knock all that down with my elbow. All right, grab your board, wipe it off. So you just wanna sort of wipe off some of that paint. You also wanna work it into your bristles a little bit. So you can now see it's quite well spread out. Start with a little bit, build it up. Sometimes you need a little bit more, sometimes you need a little bit less. And then all we're gonna do, might take a minute to see what's going on. I don't know how well you guys can see it straight away. Let me bring you closer actually. Oops, gonna lose something. You can sort of see that texture there, can't you? So we're just really lightly and going in different directions. Yeah, Chino was the right choice. We're just really lightly going to brush it on. If you need to, a little bit more paint. Oh, hang on. I need closer so I have to adjust. So next to nothing on your bristles. No, so I'm pretty sure this has been painted. I didn't paint it, um, but it may be the original finish. I'm pretty sure it's been painted though at some point in its life. I definitely didn't paint it. Um, this is how I got it, but it's got a lot of brush strokes and a bit of cross hatching happening with the paint. So we're just sort of gonna catch all that with our dry brushing first. I did think about putting some rust on this, so we might, I'm thinking even just this top lip might look really nice. And if I could really get it to sort of drip down as well. So I love dry brushing for these, for detail like this. Look at that now. Look at that bit of interest. Whereas if we go over there, see how it's really plain? See how much that just lifts it? So we're just, with a bit more paint on our brush. See how that just lifts the detail? I really enjoy dry brushing. I do it a lot. It's one of my favorite techniques. I've got a lot of favorites. <laughs> if you watch my lives, that's probably a regular sentence of mine. Um, but this is absolutely, it's so easy to do. It's so effective and it really is a great way to add detail easily without going overboard. So you can see it's got some marks on it. I'm not worried about those. I think they all add to it. So I'm not I haven't painted any more on this. I don't want to make it look new or fresh or anything like that. We're looking for old. I knew when I got it that I wanted to use this for old. i sorry, use this for old. I wanted to make it look old right from the word go. So this was never going to look new and shiny. I think pieces like this need to look old. I think they always look better with a bit of age to them. 
You know what though, I'm almost a bit tempted to bring in a bit of color. Maybe we might bring in some brick, just a little bit. This is probably terracotta or something similar underneath. By the weight of it, I'm gonna guess terracotta. Let's go around here, have I forgot this bottom? Sorry, there's a lot of traffic out there. I know sometimes Facebook's very picky as to what it wants to pick up in the sound, but some weeks I've noticed it's really picking up the traffic, which is annoying. We are on a main road, so, and it can get very loud at this time of the day on a Friday. So, in every direction. Get those details. And I don't mind if some parts of this are heavier than others either. I'm really just trying to not have obvious brush strokes within my brushing. So really, really randomly using the edge as well as using the flat. Sometimes it's nice to sort of just squiggle it on. Now around here, I've got a blot of white, it touched did it touch? It touched something else that I was working on. I'm just gonna leave it. I might sand it off later, but for right now, I kinda like it. I like the little bit of extra that it gives it. You never know. Like I've left all the marks on it, I'm not going to get rid of all that detail, but we'll see how we go. I may yet remove that. And this is why I love this technique as well, because if I decide that I don't like it, I can just paint straight over the top. So all over, I really like this already actually. I think we'll definitely bring in a lighter color as well, just to add some more interest to it and I'm using uh, this is silk finish chalk finish and silk finish both work for dry brushing but if I was specifically creating texture with the texture finish then I'd be using chalk finish but silk finish works fine for creating this kind of texture as well Adding a bit more. Make sure we get all these bottom bits. And just keep going over and building that up. I love doing little projects like this. It's a nice little break away from the big ones. The dresser that we started working on <laughs> the other week that's giving me nightmares is pretty much complete. I've just got to put the handles on, which depending on how I'm going after this, it is on my to-do list for today. So who knows? It might be listed for sale tonight or tomorrow if we're lucky. <laughs> I'll get there eventually. So just getting those top edges. All right, so that's looking really, really pretty. Take you back a little bit. So you can see how it's just added a bit of detail. I'm just sort of having a good look, seeing if I've missed anywhere. If there's anywhere that so far I'm already wanting to bring some more detail. I really need like a little spinny thing here, don't I? Turntable. All right, that's looking really good. Let's come in with, not that, and not that, let me move those out of the road. Um, let's come in with some macadamia, and then we might come in with some mist, I think. Let's come in a little bit brighter and see what it does. It's not open, yep. And then we will, and then we'll come in with the mist. If we still want a bit more brightness to it, we can bring in 
I can go get a white. Oh, this one just does not want to open. Gosh. Who designed you? If I can get it open, we will come in with some macadamia. If I can't, um, oh, we will just go straight in the east. Oh my God. I need to open jars before we go live, don't I? What a mess. So let me clean it up. It's just sort of seeped out of a little bit, I think. There we go. Get some of that off it. Back in the floors now. All right, macadamia. So, a little bit lighter again. So this is the chino. Please don't tip it out. And the macadamia is at the bottom. So a little bit lighter. We're gonna come in with the exact same brush. Again, just dipping it in. So you can see how much lighter that is. I'm just gonna take some of that off my brush. There's way too much on there. So, oh, where are we? Over here, all right. So I don't wanna put this everywhere. I'm not looking to cover up the chino. I just want to add more to it. Look at that already. See how that's really just catching all of that and it's really just brightened that, hasn't it? Let's put a bit more across the bottom here. Now, if I do put more, too much on, I can come back in and put a bit more of the chino. But we'll see how we go. Good, so you can see what I'm doing would be helpful, wouldn't it? So we're just going to sort of keep doing this. Yeah, if I decide it's too much, I can come back in with the carbon, which we might even do just more to show you than anything, but just to add a little bit more detail as well. Quite hard to see on the camera. I do apologise. This is about as good as it gets with Facebook. Sorry. <laughs> I will answer that in a moment once we're done. All right. I don't know if that cut out or not, but I just got a phone call. Um. Normally, they just tell me that there's a phone call. I don't actually cut out on the screen, so I hope they didn't cut that out. Across the top, spinning again. sure that I'm getting the bottom as well. Don't want to miss a big chunk of it. Trying to keep quite consistent with our finishing here. And you can see how easy and effective this really is as well, just to add simple detail. It's looking spectacular already. Um, I have a suspicion that I did not take a before photo, <laughs> which is always the way, but I'm quite happy with this. So, just bringing our white up still. I think we've got quite a lot of white on there. I'm really, really, really loving this. I think what we might do, 
Um, what might we do? I don't think going any lighter is going to do anything. Let's go in with just a touch of the carbon, just so I can show you. And then I can always go back over it if it's too much as well. So carbon in the chalk finish. The macadamia was in the chalk as well. So you can see when it comes to dry brushing, it's exactly the same. Tiny little bit on my bristles. Now carbons are very black. It's black, black. All right, so you just need a tiny little bit. The carbon might actually look a bit darker as well. So, tiny, tiny, tiny little bit on my bristles, not too much. It might not be enough to really do a lot. That was, it's already dry. <laughs> Shall we try again? Let's just keep the lid up and very carefully put the jar down without spilling it. Right, a little bit more. There we go. Chalk finish does dry super fast as well. So don't stress if you're having, finding it's just going away on you too fast. Don't stress, that's not more fun. It does dry very, very quickly. So I'm just bringing in a little bit of carbon. I don't want to cover up everything that we've just done, but adding a bit of dimension there with the carbon, I think it's quite nice as well. I don't know how well you can see it on the camera. I'm hoping you can see it better than what I think you can. But I'm really just looking. To Add just a little bit. Right, it's just enough in a few spots. It's just sort of toning down the white a little bit as well, which is nice. Sometimes you just wanna, almost, almost like you're erasing it, really. We're just toning it down. Might put a little bit more of that white spot there, just so it's not so white. It's a good way to sort of anywhere that you've got lines, which you don't really want. You don't want your lines. You want it to look quite natural. It's a nice way just to tone those down as well. And you can always come back in with some more white as well if you need to. Now what I'm actually thinking Thinking, thinking, thinking. Any questions? So this is looking gorgeous. But I'm thinking, let's flick carefully. Hang on, I'm gonna move that artwork. Because the last thing I need is flick on that. Let's just move this whole. I'm going to flick just a tiny little bit of white paint. Sometimes those spots, it just breaks it up a little bit. So we're going to come in, which brush do I like? I like a nice firm bristle. So we're going to come in with this one. As you can see, like those bristles are glued together. Um, so we're going to come in with some of the macadamia. A little bit on there. All I'm going to do is just sort of load it up. You got to get dirty fingers doing something like this as well. Don't worry about that. Just don't have anything too close because it always goes further than what you think it's going to as well. So don't have anything in the road that you don't want paint flicked onto. It's really subtle and you'll see it. I'll post some close-up photos once we're done. Once we're done, I will take some photos and I'll post some close-ups so you can see this. It's not a lot. Make sure I'm getting it down the bottom as well. 
but it's just enough to add that bit more detail as well. You know what? A little bit of extra white here and there. Doesn't hurt, so I've just sort of popped it on every now and then. And these bristles are quite uneven on this brush as well. So it's an easy way to sort of add a little bit more. So you can see <laughs> it's a messy job. I love doing this though. I do it quite a lot. And it just adds that little bit more detail as well. So I'm just sort of blotching it on in a few bits and then rubbing it with my fingers as well. Last side. You could do a lot with this. You could really bring in a lot of different colors. You could bring in some terracotta, like the um, Perico brick, which is a real terracotta orange. This one here. I really like make it look like it's showing through as well. There's a lot of scope with this sort of thing. So just have fun. The key with the dry brushing though is to have some sort of, to get a really effective dry brush on a finish like this, you want to have some sort of, um, what was I trying to say? Some sort of texture I think definitely works better. I've just got some of my fingers, so I'm just sort of wiping it on a little bit. Might as well use it all up. So, this is fun. I love doing projects like this. Um, let me know if you have a go at creating your own sort of custom finishing. And I love that this, doesn't matter who does it, it's always going to look different as well, which is really fun. Nobody's finish is ever going to be exactly the same, um, which I love. I think that's really unique and it always builds it up. All right, I think we might leave it there for today. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, I will pop this one up on to our YouTube channel. Um, there's heaps of videos up there. So it's just the Painted Brushing Co. Um, heaps of videos, our lives are all up there, as well as heaps of other tutorials. I film a lot of little mini tutorials as well, um, which, or I film a lot of tutorials overall. Some of them I cut down to be little mini ones that don't need to be really long with lots of detail. Other ones I like them a bit longer. I also link pretty much every tutorial at some point has been linked onto my website as well. So when you're looking at a particular product, you can see different ways to use it and how I recommend using it as well. Um, that's it from me today. Have a wonderful weekend. If you are a local and you are looking to come to our beginners workshop tomorrow afternoon, please let me know ASAP. Um, we have four spots left. So if you are keen and you're not doing anything tomorrow, uh, message me ASAP. Other than that, we have one spot left at our next, at next week's Paint and Sip with local artist, Stephen Stanley. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Have a wonderful afternoon. Bye everyone.